Let's imagine that you're playing Minecraft and getting a villager trading station set up. You've got all the farms and the emeralds, all you need is just to place down the leg turn in front of this villager, check what trade it has, find out it doesn't have what you need, break the leg turn, and then do that over and over and over and over again until either you find your trade or your sanity runs out first. In this scenario you might start to wonder, what even are the odds of finding a certain enchanted book trade, let's say looting free, from a villager in Minecraft? You probably try to google the answer and then come to the wrong conclusion because this info doesn't seem to be anywhere obvious on the internet. Afterwards, you'd probably go to the Minecraft wiki where you would find that it doesn't state that information anywhere, but it does tell you three important pieces of information so that you can math this out yourself. First up is that villagers sell all enchantments in the game except for Soul Speed, Swift Sneak and Wind Burst, meaning that all enchants are equally as likely to appear no matter the level or usefulness. Second is that there is a 67% chance of seeing a book trade by a librarian villager every reroll. This means that it's only a bit over half the time that you destroy and replace a leg turn that the villager will even have the option of selling an enchanted book, no matter what the enchantment that book has. The third and final important info is that all rerolls are fully independent of each other. This means that it doesn't matter if you've already seen 5 protection 1 books in a row, the next reroll is just as likely to be protection 1 as any other enchantment. Now that you understand how librarian villager trading works, all you need to do is find a list of all enchantments in the game as well as their max level. You need to know the max level because a villager is capable of trading all possible levels of a certain trade. This is where some people go very wrong in trying to calculate this because they only think of the number of uniquely named enchants instead of a full slate of all possible different enchants that you can get. Thankfully, this Minecraft Help Center website has what seems to be a fully updated list of Minecraft enchants. Now all there is to do is add up the max level of the enchants, making sure to ignore Soul Speed, Swift Neat, and Wind Burst, and voila! The odds of getting doing free is 1 in 126. And if you've been following along, you'd know that number is actually wrong, because it ignores the odds of you not getting any book 32% of the time. Luckily, that math is pretty easy. All you need to do is multiply the odds together. So the actual equation is 67% or 67 out of 100 times 1 out of 126, which gives 0.005317 or much more usefully a about 0.53% chance of any reroll giving you that sweet, sweet looting free. Yay. Or not really, right? Like, sure you can understand from the math that the odds of seeing the book you need is really low. It's cool to have the specific number of 0.53%, but it ultimately leaves kind of a bitter taste in the mouth. Like, it isn't actually what you wanted to know. In truth, what you wanted to know was actually if you are justified for feeling unlucky and annoyed at the game for still not giving you any looting free book despite going through a hole as Iron Axe. That question is much more realistic and also much more mathematically interesting. Alright, so this is the moment I can't clean. This entire video is basically going to be a worse version of this video by Adif. The math is going to be basically the same and I'm gonna parrot a lot of what Adif said in his video, even if I don't actually understand why the math works as it does. Basically, I'm very very far from knowledgeable when it comes to math and probability. The reason I still want to make this video in the first place is to show people how the math that was presented in Adif's video on shiny hunting and Pokemon can be almost directly transferred over to villager trading in Minecraft. As well as that, I'm going to go over what makes villager trading different from shiny hunting and the practicalities of actually using this math so that you can easily look up the odds yourself if you're ever curious about just how long you can expect to take on finding that damn looting free book or any other book for that matter. TLDR, if you want to understand the maths, watch Adif's video. If you want to understand how to use the math for villager trading in Minecraft or any other similar activity, keep watching because there's really juicy bits just ahead. Alright, so in math speak, what we're doing here is called a Bernoulli trial. Basically testing to see if a random and independent success or failure occurs, for example, when rolling a dice for a certain number, or in our case, testing to see if a librarian villager has the specific trade we're looking for. So essentially what we want to find out is how unlucky we are if we don't get a single success on or before trial number n. To find this out, we're going to use what's called a cumulative distribution function. This is performed by filling out this formula. Oh, that looks way too complicated. <laughs> Let me fix it by seeing that it's exactly the same as this way similar formula. Why? No clue. As Gative or 
something. All that matters to me is that I'm pretty damn sure it works. Basically, what this is, is a summation of the odds of getting a success on trial 1 with the odds of getting a success on trial 2 and 3 and 4 and so on and so on, all the way up to whatever number of trials you've done when the success landed. Now let's put all of this into the context of not getting a looting free book by the time you've gone through a whole Iron Act. What are the odds of that? Well, first we look at the odds of any specific book. As I discussed before, this is equal to 0.53% or 67 out of 12,600. So we go onto our calculators and write parenthesis 1 minus 67 out of 12,600 to the power of n times 100. Now we want to fill out n. n is the number of times you checked a new trade for the book you were looking for. In our case, n is the durability of an iron X because it broke after using all its durability amount of times. The internet says that number is exactly 250. So filling in n with the number 250 finally gives us the chance of not finding the looting free trade after rolling for it 250 times. That answer is around 26%. So you have to get quite unlucky not to have seen it by that point. It's far from impossible, but definitely unlucky. The real cool thing about this formula though, is that you can also use it to find out how lucky you are. If you say, get the looting free by reroll number 10. All you have to do is change the number n to 10 and importantly place a 1 minus in front of the formula. This 1 minus ensures that you get the odds for getting a success by trial number n as opposed to the original formula which gets you the odds of not getting a success by trial number n. So if we use the 1 minus formula we can see that the odds are around 5.2%. So seeing the looting free book when you've only rerolled the villager 10 times is very lucky. I hope you now see how this formula is very useful for a lot of randomization based grinds and all sorts of video games. So this is about it for the main part of the video. However, if you stick around, I'll go a little bit deeper with the details on the ways of interacting with and about this formula. Don't worry, it won't be that complicated. Again, I want to stress that Adif's video does a much better job at explaining the details. So please do go watch that video if you are confused about the math. Have fun. It's a good video. Anyways, for the people who are still around, subscribe. <laughs> and also, let's get into the real juicy bits. First up is... A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that a 1 in 126 or similar odds means that you are probably going to get the success by or before trial number 126. Or at least it feels like the game owes you the success. This is because people think that since the average number of trials to get a success of a 1 out of 126 is 126 trials, then they must be able to expect to get a success within 126 trials. This is not true. Just because the average is 126 trials, that does not mean it's exceptionally likely to be the case. In fact, the geometric distribution that is expressed in this case through the cumulative distribution function reveals to us that the odds of getting a 1 in 126 success by 126 trials is actually around 63%. Okay, interesting. So that's a bit over 50-50. What about the actual full odds for finding the looting free book by the same amount of trials? In that case, we first have to count the results of 12,600 divided by 67, since that number doesn't assume an average of 12,600 trials, but instead one of the ratio of trials between 67 to 12,600. Okay, so that comes out to almost exactly 188. You can also understand this by saying that the odds are actually 1 in 188, since 67 divided by 12,600 doesn't exactly come out to that number, but it's kind of close enough, so you can also just go by that. Putting this into the function gives us the odds of getting the looting free book by trial 188 as 63%. Again, in fact, if you were to try this with other numbers of a one in something value and then make that n the same number as the odds average, then it's most likely going to be somewhere in the range of 63%. I don't know why this happens, but it's an insanely useful way of understanding how long any such random grind is probably going to take. So from now on, I'll always know that there's around 63% chance to get a success in the number of times that the odds say. For example, recently I was playing Pokemon Black and looking for a 5% chance to encounter a Pokemon. 5% is 1 in 20, so I knew without even having to look at a calculator that my odds of finding it in 20 attempts were around 63%. If we do calculate it, it comes out to 64%. So yeah, that's pretty darn cool and sometimes quite useful. I would personally then say that if I haven't had a success within the 63% range, it was unlucky. That's pretty cool to know. 
The second and last thing is specifically for librarian villagers book trade. I wanted to point out that you can adjust the calculation to find the odds of getting the enchantment book you need within a certain cost range. If you didn't know, the cost of books ranges based on the enchantment level. So the incredibly useful mending trade will still be much cheaper than many other useful trades because it's seen by the game as a level one trade since there's only a single level of mending in the game. So it's only going to cost between five and 19 emeralds. That's a pretty big range, but it doesn't even come close to level five enchantments. Interestingly, the ranges of costs are absolutely ginormous for those. If you want efficiency five, for example, that can cost you from as little as 17 emeralds up to a massive 64 emeralds. For a trade like that, it can sometimes be worth it to pass up an expensive trade for the chance to reduce price heavily. So for something like this, to see what the odds are of getting a trade that's within an acceptable price range, you can modify your odds of getting a book by multiplying it with the price range. So for example, if I want efficiency five, but I'm not willing to pay more than 60% of the max possible emerald price, so 64 times 0 0.60 equaling 38, then you just have to make the odds for finding the book you want as 67 divided by 100 times 1 divided by 126 times 60 divided by 100. So that gives us 67 out of 21,000. So we just plop that into the formula and make the end 250 durability for the iron axe. And that gives us a 55% chance of finding efficiency 5 within the acceptable buy range of a maximum 38 emeralds by the time we've gone through an entire iron axe worth of durability. Thank you so much for watching for the end of the video. I've been sitting on this information for a few days and I really want the world to know because I found it interesting and I couldn't find this info anywhere else. If the algorithm picks this video up, then maybe we'll actually change the way that the Minecraft community talks about probability. But who am I kidding? The truth is that I am the only person in the world to get super duper unlucky and I'm always super unlucky except for the times when I'm not.